This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is The Omega. Unranting. Yes. <laughs> And we were supposed to have, I, I announced last week we were going to try and have Vera Gun on here, but things happened and stuff, and basically, story of her life, body, her body is kicking her ass, so she couldn't make it, unfortunately, but that's okay. We love you, Vera. There was things and stuff. Yes, and you were there for it. Oh yeah, we had, we had um, because Leon was at, uh, at Con Bravo, so I came down and we had Baltimore Con. 2014. There was a Netflix panel. There was an Asian appreciation dinner. Um, <laughs> translation: We watched Netflix and ate Chinese food. Okay. Was 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 there a John Waters panel? Uh, no, he couldn't make it. Damn. <laughs> I would love to. I would love to see a John Waters panel somewhere. There's a John Waters um, museum in Baltimore somewhere. Oh, really? Yeah, because we we never could find it. I know that that um, Hagen really wanted to go last time she was in Baltimore, but. We and it just never ended up happening. Yeah, I would love to actually go and give Baltimore a proper visit sometime and check out things like that. It's a nice city, you know. It really is. There's a lot of cool stuff about. Yeah, and, and from what I've seen of it, I've seen like very little. Mostly the Northwest Loop, and there was one time I had to deliver something like in South Baltimore, which I drove. I was driving through there, and I looked across. This, I looked across the way a little bit. And I saw a trailer park that I could have sworn was used for a John Waters film. It might have been. <laughs> Which, hey, why not? But... Well, when I lived in Baltimore, I, I lived in the metro suburbs. Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, oh my gosh, you live in the wire. And I'm like, I do not live in the wire. I live in the suburbs. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. But but after I finished delivering there, the route kind of sent me closer to downtown through the interstates on that way. And what I saw, I saw the waterfront over there, and it looked really cool. Oh, it's really beautiful. And, of course, you know, the Baltimore Aquarium. Yeah. If you ever have time, it's just really great. Yes. We are, we are – you know, as soon as I'm able, I am, like, going to go and visit all these places on my own instead of, like, having to worry about whether or not I can get a trucking company to work with me to get there. <laughs> oh, hey, how do you think I – how do you think I got to Cat to be in the uh, Footloose 2011 review? Trucking company. There we go. <laughs> oh, but yeah, so I was I was actually looking on Twitter before we started. I was I was waiting for things to start, and everybody knows Josh Hadley. He does what the fuck Radio Drome, Lost in the Static, uh, also Heart Attack over all that over on Twelve One Beyond, and of course on my site rtgomer.com, which they I admit they need to be updated. I apologize. <laughs> uh, but um, but anyways, he's he's been having some troubles with his house because you know. And I, th I think he's mentioned it on his shows. He's having trouble finding work. In fact, his you know his podcasts are basically you know he he's having to make those be his full time job because nobody else wants to hire him. And at least as far as I know, you know you know he can he can tell you for sure. And and his wife has been having trouble. So so with all that plus, I, I think he's also had his identity stolen at one point. And, oh Jesus! Yeah, it was just. Oh. It's basically life pushed him down, then started uh, stomping on his balls. You know, after setting them on fire, kind of like that scene in Baby's Day Out. <laughs> Having no balls, I can only assume that that would be a bad thing. It would be so... Oh, God. I would be begging for for wondering... Okay, okay, if that happened to me, I will be honest. I would rather, you know, switch my, my uh, lower genitals around and give birth to a child without painkillers than to have my ball set on fire and then stomped oh look out you're gonna have people yelling at you now hey <laughs> send all send all your hate mail to go Miranda. yeah <laughs> no, no because see i i have not have a child well obviously but i have friends who have and apparently like you know I, i'll ask them like how was childbirth and some of them had pretty really horrible times with it and some of them had good times with it but that's the one thing anytime a guy says oh i'd rather give birth it's just better to die than live with the hate mail that you will get. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why other women are so so angry about that. But yeah. Well, well, hey, at least there'll be something coming in. <laughs> well, if I ever got pregnant, God forbid. Um, because I, you know, I tell people like you guys should get, uh, well, you know, have a baby. You guys should get pregnant. And I'm like, listen, 
I whine enough at baseline as it is. Mm -hmm. If I got pregnant, people would want to shoot me. <laughs> That's actually what would happen. And labor, labor sounds like a lot of bullshit. I'm not going through any of that. I want it to be like when I got my wisdom teeth out. Give me nitrous oxide, and then just wake me up when there's a baby. I'll deal with whatever happens. Then. Yeah, but see, here is the difference between you know the the flaming ball stamp and giving childbirth. At least when when women are done giving childbirth, as painful as that is, your bits will still work. So, well, that depends. That does depend on a few things sometimes. Okay, generally. Because sometimes, um, like, the people will try what's called VBAC, mm -hmm. virginal birth after cesarean. So if you had, like, suppose you had complications, like a friend of mine did. She really, really, really wanted a natural birth. And she had a midwife and everything, but the baby was, the baby was very large. And the baby was in breach. And the baby did not turn out of breach position. So after, I think, something like 18 or 19 hours of labor at home, the midwife, who was also a registered nurse, by the way, she was an RN, so... Cool. said, um, I need to advise you. I know you don't want to, but you have to go to the hospital at this point. The lives of you and your child are in danger. And above and beyond that, I'm putting my license at risk, you know, if, if we, we don't go to the hospital. So they went to the hospital, and she had to have a cesarean. Mm -hmm. And so then she was really angry when she got pregnant with a second child because she couldn't find an OBGYN who would agree to VBAC, to virginal birth after cesarean. So, so sometimes that can, but, you know... Etc. Yeah. Your mileage may vary. Yeah, that is one of those things. Now that I'm done, you know. <laughs> Sorry. Now that I'm done uh, you know, attracting uh, hate mail towards me. <laughs> this is the OBGYN part of the show. Yes. Now that I'm done attracting hate mail, um, to get back to Josh for a moment there, <laughs> um, you know, life is you know basically kicking him while he's down type thing, yes. and part of that also he has been having trouble making payments on his house because you know identity theft and income and all of that. And and of course, I think his wife is trying to get on disability because she's disabled. I think I think she's trying either or she is, and it's not enough or something. I don't know the exact detail there. He'll probably well, mention it on one of his shows. <laughs> apparently, it's really hard to get approved for Social Security the first time. Mm -hmm. Like my uncle said, because like, I was com topic of conversation a few months ago with uh, my family, and my uncle said yeah, this friend of his was injured in an accident at work. He's a quadriplegic now, and they denied him for for SSI. He's a quadriplegic. Well, he, he reappealed, and then they, they got it, but, you know, yeah. It's like, really, guys? Come on. Yep. Uh, so that, that can be a fucking bitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I honestly think, uh, what is it, Switzerland that came up with the idea of giving everybody a set amount per year? And then, you know, not enough to, like, be all rich and famous and everything. They're Swiss. Have some money. Yeah. The government loves you. Yeah. Not enough to, like, you know, be able to spoil yourself rotten, but enough to survive. You know, and live relatively comfort comfortably. Sure, you know. You know, you can put things back into the economy and I, I think it was Canada that tried something different as like a bit of a social experiment in that a lot of people they didn't really change their work habits with that particular stipend. It's like you get this set amount a year and you know, you do whatever you want with it. And if you want to do better than this, you can go to work. But if you want, if you're fine and comfy just where you are, you're not in poverty, you're not having to live hand to mouth, you're not having to live paycheck to paycheck, you're fine for the year, you know that sort of thing. You're good to go. Well, I think it's a matter of what's more important, comfort or convenience. Like I've always worked since I got out of school. Like for the last ten years, I've always worked two jobs, with the exception of like a few months here and there where the day, you know, I was from one day job to the other, and so. It was a few months of, you know, just the, the bookstore. But, you know, I always like – it's nice having money and it's nice making bills, but then it's nice having extra money when you can. Oh, yeah. You know? And see, that would that, – I think that's what they're kind of, go, kind of going with with the uh, set amount per year to all citizens. Yeah, you get this and it's nice to have it. You're, you'll be even, but if you want extra spending money, like say you want to – oh, I don't know – travel around the country in a big RV or something. Just for the sake of argument. It's not going to take very long. Switzerland is small. Well, well, I'm, I'm, we can use Switzerland. We'll use Switzerland or whatever country. Use whatever if you country drive, you can. If you want to drive up and down all of the mountains. That's yes. Fair. Yeah. You know, and you want to do that then, you know, obviously what you're making is not going to do it. You know, you'll need to earn up a little bit of extra money. And you go get a – you can get a part-time job and still survive on something like that. And that, that I think is more key than anything else because you have people now taking two or three or four part-time jobs and barely making a living. 
you know, barely paying bills, and that shouldn't be. I've seen soldiers, you know, uh, well, you know, not necessarily active duty, although active duty, I'm sure, also falls into this, but I knew a guy in Indy who was in the reserves, and he was not only doing his military duty, but he was working a couple of other jobs at the same time just to make his ends meet. Mm. And that should not be. It really should not be that way. So, and once again, we, we kind of deviate off of things. You bring it back to Josh here. Uh, there is a parody account, uh, Josh Hadley says on Twitter, which obviously is a parody, especially with some of the things you can read, like like how jo Josh himself is a hardcore atheist. This other guy plays him off like being a hardcore Christian. It's kind of like the anti-Josh. But there was one thing he said on Twitter right before we started that kind of pissed me off. Is uh, you know He's reminding only two weeks left to save my house, and then he puts, a.k.a. help me not work for another year. Mm. And it's like, okay, usually I, I look at that parody account, and I, it's one of those things where like you pat it on the head, you give it a laugh if it's funny, and then you send him on his merry little goddamn way. At this point here, I'm just like, what, 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 what? It, it's almost like – and maybe I'm reading too much into it, and I admit I've been kind of catching that ball for the past week. If you follow me on Tumblr, you probably understand that, but, but maybe I am reading too much into it, but it just seems to me as like, what? You're trying to say that – Working on and producing multiple podcasts and wanting to get paid for it or or needing to get paid for it is not a job. It's not work. I mean, even my shows here. I mean, I do these. I do three of these. Plus, I have my own videos working on. Plus, I've got another more long-term video series I'm working on with Dark Rose Prime. And it takes work. It takes planning. It takes scripting in some cases. In the case of this show, it takes you know looking up news stories, looking up things for shout-outs or what have you. It, it, it basically takes time and effort to put all of this together. That's, that includes recording, editing, getting things put up, getting things posted like they're supposed to be. It, it's, it's not just something, oh, instant podcast button, boom, there you go. Well, I think part of the problem is that that old misconception that if you're doing something on the internet, it's for pretend. Like, right. if you're hired, I mean, if you're hired as a social media person for a company, you are a paid position. You know, that's something that you're doing. And I think, well, I know that you and I definitely saw that uh, in the whole mess with Project Million, the idea of, well, you're just kids and you work from home, so you're not doing, you're not just sitting in an office doing this, so what this you're doing isn't real. And I, I really hate that because you wouldn't go to a doctor and say, you know, well, I mean, you'd be doing this anyway, so I'm just not going to pay you. You know, you wouldn't say the same thing to a lawyer, you know. No. So you know, if that's... it's work, it's work. And yeah. all work has market value. Yeah, and that's why a lot of us, we're, we're all getting Patreons. I've got one. I know Hagen recently got one. Yeah, she got one, although she hasn't been able to film the video recently because she wasn't feeling well last weekend and – then there's the broke on this weekend, and I don't, I'm not sure when she's filming next, but there will be a video coming. Yeah, so there will be one, and yay. And and I'm even proud to say I am actually backing her. Yeah. I, I've got an, I've got I have got enough on my Patreon coming in right now to where I can back a few people, and Hagen is definitely one of them. Well, people have asked when am I going to put up a Patreon for Lesbian Talk, and I'm actually not for the reason that Lesbian Talk doesn't cost me anything to produce. Yeah. I already have the mic. I already have the software. It's very simple for me to do. It, 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 it takes a few hours out of my week, but there's no cost associated with it, so I, I don't feel comfortable asking for money for something that doesn't cost me anything. So, Which is fair enough. Me, yeah. as, whenever I do ask, and, and people know, you guys listen to all my shows, and you know yes, I ask at the end. But I'm you also... have to maintain a site as well. And, you yeah, know. not just the site, but also maintain equipment because it does break down every now and then, Yeah, and I'll just need to be able to get more. Yeah, now you you... Yeah, it's not going to cost too much for you because, well, it's going to cost some. Like if your headset breaks that down or whatever, you'll have to get a new one. Yeah, but, so hopefully but compared that compared to happen. compared to your income, that's probably not much off your back. It's like okay, new headset, boom, you know, fifty dollars well, or whatever. I, I don't I don't know how much you make in your day job. But I'm not going to ask. Well, it's been very difficult because of the college thing. So mm -hmm. I actually am living very frugally right now because everything I make has to go into college and. There was nearly a crisis in May because they were like, oh, well, you can't get a loan through this way. There's the government money, but there's this. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. So <laughs> I feel I feel really bad. I'm like, like I work two jobs. People are like, you must be loaded. I'm like, no. Yeah. But in theory, I'm loaded. Yeah. 
Well, in comparison to me, it, it would be easier for you to upgrade your equipment with your two jobs. Even saving for college, it would be a little easier for you as opposed to me, who basically I'm having to rely on Patreon <laughs> for it. So, and that stuff comes in monthly. So, whether you know, however you set up your thing, the payments do come in monthly. And after this month, it should be a little easier. I'm just, ah, uh, this month's gonna be hard. That's all. Uh, but I'll, but I'll make it. I'll make it. <clears throat> So the long and short of it is, you should give money to Josh Hadley. We're just saying. Yeah, help him, help him <laughs> save his house. If you cause... can, if you can, if you can afford to do so. Yeah. Yes, please. And if not, spread the word. Spread the word everywhere. Yeah, don't, don't have like I always. If I see something that's worthy, and I'll pass along. I always say to people, you know, if you can, please do, because yes. I don't want anyone to feel like they're living hand to mouth, and you know, they shouldn't have to make that worse to help someone else. Help yourself first. Yes, definitely. It's just, oh. So anyway, with all that said, let's go ahead and get our shout outs out real quick. <laughs> because we've like, shout out. Because we've used like 15 minutes just talking, just just going on about to try to get onto that one tweet. <laughs> you ex- you, see, you need to expect this when you have me on the show. Yes. This is how I am. Yes, but, um, but my shout out this week, I don't remember if I've mentioned her on the show before, but I'm going to mention her now. She is a reviewer known as the Cinematic Hipster. Do, do, do. Who has the show? The show that I'm looking at right now. I've got her latest one up called Blu-ray Talk. I believe she's also been mentioned on radio, mentioned and featured on Radio Dead Air before. And the be- the easiest place I can tell you to get a hold of her and to watch her videos is at the cinematichipster.tumblr.com. Which, if you go there right now, her newest review is on Spring Breakers. Well, Blu-ray Talk review thing is on Spring Breakers. I've watched it. It's pretty good. And she's British, so Ooh, British. That, that 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 scores points there. <laughs> oh, but she's she's pretty awesome. So it's like she's like she's like film brain, but but female. <laughs> Just exactly like film brain. Almost. Although she's a redhead, film brain's a blonde, and I do not know how his legs look. I don't think that's something that we want to find out. No, I don't think I do. Some of the people might. I'm sure he's got, like, some obsessed friends. Like, oh my gosh, Sean Brain, I love your legs. And he'd be like, that's <laughs> great. I have to go now. Yes. <laughs> that's my approximation of Film Brain's voice. Your mileage may vary. Probably. Oh, but uh, do you have any shout-outs? I do, actually. And this person is actually a reviewer that my wife is a big fan of. And her name is Infamous Sphere. And she does primarily LGBT cinema, which we don't have a lot of people that look at that. Oh yeah, I've seen, I've seen some of her stuff. I actually tried to contact her to see if she wanted to be featured on our site, but she hasn't said anything back. Mm. So you should definitely go watch her show. Um, you can find her at blip.tv slash infamous sphere, mm-hmm. and her stuff is really good. And she does do cameos for Hagen sometimes, so you occasionally find her popping up there. Sweet. <laughs> and I'm so- really glad that she took one for the team to review LGBT movies because they're always sad. Oh yeah. They always, there's always sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and isn't she also British? I'm not sure. I thought she was either British or Australian, but I can't yeah. tell. Well, she's, she's, so, she's got the non-American accent going on. So We know that she speaks English with a way. So there you go. Yeah, there if you, you go. know her accent, write the show. There you go. <laughs> oh, so with all of that, let's go ahead and hit the news. <laughs> it's time for the news. Yes, and we've got a twofer on on one particular topic, and I'll let you know when we get there. Oh dear. Oh, but our first one, oh Hobby Lobby, we didn't really get a chance to talk in depth about it because I wanted to save it for constructive deconstruction. But in the few weeks that have ensued, uh, for those who don't know, Hobby Lobby successfully well, I, I say they successfully lobbied, no pun intended. <laughs> to to uh, the government to get them to say, hey, you know what? If you have a religious reason for denying your your employees health coverage, and 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 in the in the scope of this one, they're going with birth control or what have you. But you know, you, but the overall thing is, you know, if you have a religious reason for not, you know, providing birth control or whatever or or other kind of medical insurance or what have you, then that's totally cool. You know, never mind that your employees have earned it by working for you, and never mind that that should they should be entitled to it because they are working for it. I'm just gonna say this before we start about the story: mm-hmm. is that we're the only country that does this. 
you guys do realize this, right, listeners out in Radio Land, that we're the only country that freaks the fuck out about this shit. Nobody else cares. Like, this is such a third world problem, and we're a first world country, I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, it's just, okay, what you do with your stuff is your own time. It's like, you know, I don't see any companies going out and saying, yeah, okay, we're going to pay you this, but if we catch you buying, say, Nintendo products, then we're going to have to fire you. No company does that. And no companies better take that idea either. Except, except maybe PlayStation. Oh, no, not even Sony would do that. If you work for Sony, we find you with a Wii. That's it. Ten <laughs> lashes. Uh, I don't even think Sony would do that. Or Microsoft, oh. for that matter. I'm kidding. They probably do. No. But they'll admit to. But, and, of course, every, and it was, and I think the decision was handed down. I think it was the Supreme Court. That, that, yep. that, yeah. Mm. But that they're not stopping there. The family of evangelical Christians that owns the Hobby Lobby chain of craft supply stores is planning a sprawling $800 million Bible museum in the nation's capital, just blocks away from the National Mall. What? A Bible museum? You, we already have that. It's called the Creation Museum in fucking Kentucky. All right, just to interject with some sanity, because I have to play devil's advocate here. Okay. I could see a museum like this doing really well. In the actual Holy Lands, where they have all the relics from that time. And you could be like, look, it is a clay pipe unearthed in Jerusalem in the floor of some building somewhere. It dates from biblical times. Huh. Yeah. Or like, on the Dead Sea. That would be another good place to have a museum, because you would actually have, you know, artifacts. Yeah. But this sounds really stupid. It does. I mean, I, I think, you know, the idea of the museum itself... Maybe not so much as long as it's just like a museum being a factual, you know, not necessarily factual because, well, as far as we know, the Bible is not necessarily factual. It's, all it's not factual, but you could, if you had stuff about that time. Yeah. You know, like Mesopotamia and Ur and like the Fertile Crescent in that region, that is an actual historical, we call it quote unquote biblical times because, you know, it's an easy point of reference. But if you wanted to do a factual museum about the world that these biblical persons might have lived in that's totally cool i have no problem with that yeah and and that would be fine 800 million dollars in dc i don't know but uh because I've, I've we've been to dc dc is is not big dc is fucking packed yo yeah it, it's 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 like you take my room and you put it into a pop can that's how that's washington dc what's a pot can pop Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> is this like a specific unit of measurement in in Florida for like your pot? No. Well, I'll I mean, have one can of pot, please. Well, that would be an interesting thing. <laughs> pot can. Oh, so yeah, the New York Times reported that the Green family, flushed from their victory before the U.S. Supreme Court, want to leave their mark not only on the nation's laws but on the capital city itself. It's like they, they, they just. And I'm just imagining like a kid, you know, being happy that they they got their way, and then they they write sucker on their opponent's face. Well, here's the thing though, they're planning it. I mean, I I work in telecom construction. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's what I do for my day job, and there is so much bullshit that you have to go through with municipalities just to get building permits and stuff like that for stuff that's already there. You know, there is they have to acquire the land. They have to get all the necessary permits. And guess what? Permitting in D.C., because it's one of the markets my company works in, is so difficult. I mean, they can say that they're planning it. The actual execution is something that's very, very different. Yeah. Oh, so if, if they're going to try and go ahead with it, it sounds like they're going to have a little bit of a difficult time. But if they have $800 million to play with, ugh. Yes, but, I mean, you have to think about that. I mean, construction always, always, always runs over. Yeah. Because there's always going to be problems that come up that you haven't anticipated. Um, it depends on if they're going to have to get a crane in because crane rental is an astronomical cost. You need a street permit for crane rental. I mean, that might be just the cost of, of building, not even site acquisition. Because that's going to be, I mean, the kind of permits you have to get. Like I said, I mean, it's outrageous and I think they're horrible. But hopefully, you know, they'll at least have to spend double that in licensing. Yeah, and oh, there's something else. The, the article goes into like some of the backstory, which we've already covered. 
Um, Green Family Psycon Steve Green, the current president of Hobby Lobby, said that the purpose of the museum, which will include artifacts related to the Christian and Jewish faiths – oh, nice to be inclusive to, like, all one other religion – uh, well, in all in all but fairness, I know, but I, I, but I do Islam they, Islam wasn't around yet, though. Yeah, you know this is true. But but, but from what I understand, uh, you know the simplest the simplistic uh, enough way that I understood it was that Christianity covers the entire Bible. The Jewish religion only covers the first part of the Bible. That's, well, that's a very simplistic way yes, of looking at it. Simplistically, yes. But then there's also the, the the Torah and the Talmud and all the like. The right. I really dislike, you know. I mean, that, that's why the, the phrase is Judeo-Christian, because Christianity did start out as, like, basically a small cult of Judaism. Hmm. I mean, you can't a... talk about, quote-unquote, biblical times without talking about the Jews, because there weren't Christians yet. So that's the yeah. point. Uh, so, yeah, you have a point. Uh, the Bible, Green said, is a reliable historical document that deserves a more prominent role in American life. No. Number one, it is not a reliable historical document. It is a religious text. Fuck off. Number two, it cannot get more prominent in American life when your religion is the goddamn majority. It's like, I'm sorry, you don't need it. Well, the thing is that we don't live by biblical law. They're the same reason that we don't live by Sharia law. For the same reason that we don't live by the laws of, I don't know, like Spain or something. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. This nation is in danger because of its ignorance of what God has taught, he said. In this is why speech. this is why I can go to Hills Fish Store, and if there's a Hills near you, you should go because they're great. Mm -hmm. And I can buy shellfish, and no one will get stoned. I mean, with rocks, anyway. Yeah. Now we 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 get some other things, and well, we can. Well, you don't get that from Hills, but but yeah, like I mean, it's just stop it, stop it, everyone. I hate everyone in your stupid dive. Yeah, I, I think our, our dot, opinions on this dot is like, dot com. There you go. <laughs> I hit you and you're stupid, just stop it to die. Dot .com. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, basically, he, he's, he, of course, they're another one of those people that's pretty much like, oh, we were losing Christian values. We need to get our Christian values back when it's no. No, we don't. We weren't supposed to have Christian values and our laws and government. Guess what? Not killing people, not stealing, not being a dick to others. That is, you know, Christianity does not have a patent on that. We don't have well, to pay every time we're good people to it's, the it, Church of Christianity just because we're nice and decent people. We all thing. agree that, hey, let's not be dicks to one another. We don't need a religious reason to not be dicks. Well, the thing is, it's illegal to kill someone. In pretty much every country, I think. It's not illegal to be a dick. Yeah. Like, the Bible says, thou shalt not be a dick. I mean, obviously it doesn't say that, but you know what I mean. Yeah. But, you know, you can't you can't call 911 and say, someone was being mean to me. Well, were they violating laws? Did they attack you? Have they threatened you? No, but he said, shut up. And I was sad. No, that is, that's not illegal. That's not how it's we not. do things. But, but the fact of the matter is... You know, the reason why some of these laws are in place, we agree they are good ideas. They are not necessarily Christian-born. Like porn. Porn yeah. is probably great. I don't watch porn personally, but I know a lot of people do, and that's what – that's Hello. great. Yeah, you could watch – I mean, as long as you're not watching porn right this second because that would be kind of gross. But, that would be like, weird. It would. But so the thing is that, like, you know, the Bible does never say you shouldn't watch porn, but there's probably something involved. But porn is not illegal, and people keep like, well, porn should be illegal. Well, if no one's getting hurt and everyone's getting paid, it doesn't yeah, really count go. what the Bible says. Yeah, exactly. You know, the the majority of the women and men now that get into porn, they do it because they want to or or at the very least they're doing it because they have no other place to turn. It's not it's it's nobody's really forcing them into it. Not like you don't have like say the the stereotypical sleazy uh, producers well, what or if directors it just turns or whatever. Out that, they're, that they're good at it. Oh, and like, if that's oh, just... and if they're good at it, then more power to them. You know, there's, a, there's a movie in that right there. Yeah, I follow several porn stars on Twitter, and they they enjoy the lifestyle. They enjoy what they do, and they're not they're not like these other floozies or anything. They're actually very intelligent, well spoken, well thought out women. So I guess the point of the story is that if you were going to go to Hobby Lobby to buy craft supplies, you should buy porn instead. There you go. You know, I, I can point you to some really good porn sites that that would be a much better use of your money. <clears throat> or you could, or you could support your local shop. There you go. That too. 
<laughs> in fact, in fact, if if you live in my area, you and I know at least one or two listeners live within relative driving distance of me. I think they're still open. There's a store called Crafty Cats. It's a craft store. It's a local store. Go and support them. Yeah, or Michael's Crafts. I love Michael's because everything is always on clearance. There you That's go. Good. <laughs> oh, so to move on over to Fort Wayne, Indiana. Oh dear. To kind of keep sort of with the religious sentiment here. Depending on how you look at it, either God drove a car and a motorcyclist Anthony Oliveri, or more likely, a woman took a leap of faith and the laws of physics did the rest. What? While driving along the roads of Fort Wayne, Indiana, a car suddenly and inexplicably swerved directly into Oliveri. Police say the car not only ran over his bike, but also over Oliveri, leaving him badly injured on the road. The car kept on driving. So it was a hit and run? Yeah. Okay. So, so it was basically, she not only rolled over him, he, she rolled over the bike and basically broke all of his ribs. Oh, my God. Yeah. He survived, thankfully. Yeah. So so this is something uh, – and, and just watch. This will go uh, Tuesday. This will be live Tuesday. And you know you you should be seeing this for, for the first time Tuesday, I should say. So the night before with, on What the Fuck is Wrong with You, if you saw it on there, just know that I'm – Probably figuring it's going to be there. Crossover crossover stories happen. <laughs> this is one of them. I'm pretty sure. Oh, so uh, they the police caught up with the woman who hit him several blocks down the road, and according to the police report, the woman identified as 25 year old Piranda C Hill told okay. them that she was driving, and out of nowhere, God told her that He would take it from here, and she let go of the wheel and let him take it. Of course he did. That is not what they mean when you say, God, take the wheel. They don't mean you take that literally. Wasn't that a song? A, a song, a slogan on a shirt? You don't take it literally. No, you know what that's translation for? I wasn't paying attention and lost control of the car, and now i got to think of something to tell the police because I damn near killed somebody. Yeah, it's like, God damn it. Uh, God, God is not your scapegoat either. Okay? He should not be your scapegoat for anything. Just, just, no. No, just no. Oh, and here, here's the two fur that I'm, that I, that I mentioned earlier. Oh, both out of Texas, obviously, because we're talking about Representative Louis Gomert, who I still say he should change his fucking goddamn last name. Because it's too <laughs> close to mine. And you're making me look bad, so stop it. Mocking non-believers for failing to grasp the logic behind the existence of God, Representative Louis Gohmert cited an exchange with the late Texas entertainer Bob Murphy to disprove atheism during a prayer rally in Washington, D.C. Wait a second, he's dead. How is he going to disprove anything? I have no idea. But... Is he going to stand at this guy's tombstone and debate? <laughs> but but here, here's what he says. Bob Murphy used to say, you know, I feel bad, so bad for atheists. I do, Gomert recalled at Celebrate America, a three-week-long revival event. Think about it. No matter how smart they are, they think they are, an atheist has to admit that he believes the equation nobody plus nothing equals everything. Wait, what? That's what I'm thinking. It's like, wait, what? How embarrassing for an intellectual to have to say, yeah, I believe that, Gomert said, citing Murphy. But nobody I don't... plus nothing equals everything. Who said, like, is that a direct quote? Like, who are we referencing here? Well, he, well, Gomer is talking about a time he was talking with Bob Murphy. Right, right. But where does that quote come from? Is, was was Murphy quoting something else, or did he, like, I, I need more facts. I, I gotta, just gotta know. So Gomer delivered his final por point to a chorus of applause as he occluded, concluded, rather. He, you couldn't get everything unless there was something that was the creator of everything, and that's the Lord we know. He did not elaborate on how he leapt from something to nothing to everything to the Lord we know, rather than to say a flying spaghetti monster. And I did not quit. That, that is that so is what's incoherent. In what is he? What, what is his main point? I, I don't even, dude. It's like, dude, what the fuck? He also okay. neglected to explain who would have created the Lord he knows or whether the Lord created himself before he existed. That's some freaky shit. Even the doctor's looking at you like, what the fuck? Oh. Do you want to hear something? Yes. Okay, so. I, and I thought of you when I saw this. That's the first thing I thought of. Is I, I had to spend some time in a waiting room in a hospital this weekend. Mm -hmm. And it was like um, very early on a Saturday morning. 
and they had this preacher on. It was on TV, and he had a show, and he was talking about the blessings of the Lord. You had to send a thousand dollar seed to him, and then his people in his prayer call center will pray for you. But he was saying how you know, 16 years he was married to his wife, and they didn't have kids. It's 16 years, and then finally they had a child, and they were like, "The Lord blessed us." And I said, "If you didn't have a child for 16 years, you were putting it in wrong." Either that, or you're just really unlucky. I mean, like, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Did you finally learn the right hole, sir? <laughs> but well, I, I thought... Did, I... did you finally realize you can take off the condom? It's just, I was watching this guy and I thought of you. There you go. <laughs> Evangelicals, you know, you know, TV preachers make, make Omega think of me. If you have not been blessed by a child in 16 years, you are putting it in the wrong hole, sir. Well, I, well I've, I've been with 17 women, not been blessed with a child. Am I doing it wrong? Oh, you're just being careful. Okay. <laughs> I assume that when they said blessed with a child, I was guessing that they had been trying. Okay. Yeah, because I'm not trying, so I just like to have a lot of fun, and sex is fun. <laughs> anyway, the other one from uh, Mr. Gomert, uh, asserted, he asserted that the crisis of women and children refugees seeking protection inside the U.S. borders was so serious that it put our continued existence at risk. From who? That's what I want to know. During a speech on the House floor, the Texas congressman renewed his call for border states to invoke their rights under the Tenth Amendment and to declare war against a mass and, and mass invasion of refugees. Editors, come on. Our continued existence is at risk with what's going on at the southern border, he explained, adding that the Obama administration's Department of Homeland Security was complicit because it had actually assisted the criminal conspiracy in achieving its illegal goals by not enforcing the law. According to the Tea Party-backed Republican, criminal aliens had committed 2,993 homicides in the past six years. But not three-year-olds. Like, I saw a story, and I saw an, a story, of, this was on The Guardian, so it was not a U.S story about this the fact that these these families are sending small children across the border and hoping for the best mm -hmm. small children are not robbing liquor stores no if they're robbing anything it's just the hobo on the corner with his change if anything maybe 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 a 7-eleven or maybe they don't have to rob they just look around look cute and pathetic and and there you go people give them money and food because nobody wants to see a child suffer. Yes, like the thing is that these are children, and I think that's what everyone's missing is the fact that, all right, someone crosses the border illegally, you catch them, then they go to immigration court, and then they get deported back to their country. Mm -hmm. You can't try a five-year-old. No, it's just like, you know, like a lot of what times... mommy and daddy told them. They well, probably don't even, even realize that... what's going on. A lot of times, because there's you know a big story about this, is that they are being sent in the care of people whose, not job, but people, that's what they do, is they transport children. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they help people get across the border. So you have a child who's been told, you go with this man and it'll everything will be fine. You know, I mean, they the, these people who are demonstrating and picketing, these buses full of scared children who don't speak the language... I mean, you know, if a, if a child is, is 16, if a child is 18, that's that's different. Yeah. Then, you know, they can be sent back. But the, you, you can't just say to a five-year-old, go back to the desert to die. Yeah, this, that's not cool. And, and I don't, oh, no, of course, he also insists that they've committed at least 7,695 sexual assaults. That sounds like a number he pulled out of his ass. That, that just that sounds like a number I would pull out of my ass. Just uh, seven, six, nine, five. Yeah. You know, you want to talk about a war on women? This administration will not defend the women of America from criminal aliens by the thousands and hundreds of thousands. You just keep stacking them up there, don't you? Oh, well, you started at seven thousand. Now it's thousands. Now it's hundreds of thousands. Make up your mind. There are like I think I think the number that I heard quoted on on an actual news source was fifty-seven thousand. Um, child immigrants in detention centers right now. Yikes. And that is an astronomical number. And, but again, these are children, mostly yeah. children. Okay. There are, there are some adults, but these are mostly children. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are they doing? Stealing gum from each other? I mean, like, it's so bad, but I guess people know that if you say the right buzzwords, everybody's going to freak the fuck out. Of course. That's how Fox News makes its living. Hi, oh. <laughs> Very nice. 
Yes. Oh, so yeah, my my solution for for like the these children that are being sent over like this, you know, yeah, pick them up, you know, detain them a little bit until you figure out, okay, what are we gonna do with them? You know, well, I, and, I guess put them... I mean, if they can figure out what country they they come from, and at least hopefully make sure that there's someone there to go back to. Yeah, check that out. And if there's nobody there to go back to, then you know, put them up for adoption, get somebody to adopt them. You know, it's not the ideal solution, I don't think, but, you know, at least it'll put them somewhere safe, somewhere with a family that will be willing to take care of them. Yeah, this is not an immigration crisis. This is a humanitarian crisis. Yeah, fuck. You know, these you know, and I think these that's children where the are technically refugees. Is. Yeah, and I think that's where the Obama administration sees that. It's like, yeah, this is this is not an immigration thing. These are children, dude. Children. And so all that, you know, Christian charity that people always talk about, you know, sending people to Africa to convert people and build schools. Well, what about these children that might not have a family to go back to in a war-torn, drug-ridden country, you know? Yeah, and, and why why is Mexico, you know, drug-ridden in, in Central America, drug-ridden and, and all that? Oh, yeah, that's because of the fucking war on drugs. And also because of a lot of the shit that went down over 100 years ago, like that's where we get the phrase Banana Republic, where we stepped in and tried our own hand at imperialism, and it didn't go so hot for us, did it? No. But we don't care because that was years ago, but there are people whose countries are torn apart, you know, that still are torn apart. Yeah, so in either way, it's our fault. God Pretty damn it. Much. Oh, yeah, this one. Hi, it's Florida. Take a, <laughs> take a shot. Uh, Kenneth City. A Pinellas County town born in protest of overbearing regulations and taxes is in need of improvement. Kenneth City was incorporated in the late 1950s as a tax-free community consisting of single-family homes. Mm -hmm. Developer Cindy, Sydney, rather, colon, colon, yeah, colon, intended for the city to be a model community. He named the town after his son Kenneth, stating that he wanted to strengthen his commitment to do his best because he would never do anything to disgrace their names. However, despite its adoption nearly 50 years ago, the city isn't quite what it used to be. Alex and Peggy Sinecrope have lived in the city, which lies along 54th Avenue north between St. Petersburg and Pinellas Park, for 40 years. Seen a lot of things here, said resident Alex Sinecrope. The Sinecrope say that they are embarrassed by the rundown houses, streets, city facilities, and businesses. They have a hard time calling the city home. We tell people, I live in the Tyrone area, said Peggy Sinecrope. I just don't tell people where I live. People don't take care of their homes. There's trash all over, and no one seems to care. Town officials have taken note and are proposing the Grow Kenneth City project to revitalize major corridors, parks, and neighborhoods. City leaders also want to put up more signs around the city limits so residents and passersby, passerbys rather, know when they are entering the town. The Cinecropes have some ideas. You know, when 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 the leaders say that it's now up to residents to give their input. It's long overdue, Alex Sinecrope said. There's too much here that's run down. Kenneth City wants to use red light camera funds to pay for the revitalization and beautification process. Public workshop will be held whenever at the community hall, which by the time this goes up, it'll already be held. Um, so, uh, overbearing regulations and taxes pretty much bore this town. The protests of them bore this town. Which makes me think taxes aren't very high there, maybe? Well, that's what taxes are for. They're to pay for those things that no one else pays for, like the roads and stuff like that. Yeah. And and there are people, and apparently there are people there that are that, that are just lazy bums. They don't want to do shit. They're just, eh. you know, it's like, yeah, you gotta have some workings to go with this, no matter what the city. I mean, they're already looking at red light camera funds. But what if there's you – know, what if everybody you – know, you know, you have this out now. So it's like, okay, they're going to have red light cameras. Don't run the red lights in Kenneth City. It's, it's oh, there will always be people who run the red lights. Yeah. So yeah, I mean there's – there are better ways to get the revenue up without having to resort to worrying about whether or not people are going to break the law because we have that sort of thing. And we also have stories about cops pulling people over that may or may not have required to be pulled over and ticketed, mm -hmm. you know, because of things like, you know, city revenue or quotas or what have you. You know, fi I would suggest finding a different way to bring up, um, you know, bring up your funds. You know, maybe put a, 
put a few tax city taxes in there. You know, not a lot, not a lot, but enough. You know, enough to get a, a thing going. Oh, the next one. So you you have heard that again. You know, the the GOP and uh, presumably the Tea Party as well. They want to impeach Obama because. They've wanted to impeach Obama since the day after the first election. I mean, let's be honest here. Yeah, because because oh he's this he's that oh, he's Kenyan oh, he's doing this he did this and then, and it's like really guys come on, I mean yeah people people will try to impeach Bill Clinton but that's because he lied under oath regardless yeah. of what he did outside of well, that he, lying under oath technically oaths. legally he was impeached it just was not a successful impeachment. That's what my uncle, the, the history teacher, says. Okay. But still, the point being, you know, they had a legitimate reason to do so because the president lying yeah. under oath, not a good thing. You know, I don't care what he did to to get him under oath. That's not important. The important thing is he lied under it. Yes. So, you know, that, that's, that's not – You can't good. just impeach somebody because you feel like it. Yeah, you can't impeach somebody because he's not an old white man. Because I'm willing to bet deep down in each of these people's souls, that's the big issue. Oh, He's not undoubtedly. not white man who is sucking the elephant cock of the Republican Party. Fan art appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Becky, you, there's fan art for you to do there. No. <laughs> if she actually does it, I will put it up on the show. <laughs> oh, please don't. I will, I will devour all knowledge. There we go. But uh, Representative Bod Goodlatte from Virginia, naturally a Republican, chair of the House Ju Judiciary Committee, on Sunday said the House doesn't have grounds to impeach President Obama. Hey, somebody with a brain. We are not working on or drawing up articles of impeachment. The Constitution is very clear as to what constitutes ground for impeachment of the President of the United States. He has not committed the kind of criminal acts that call for that, he said. But he still threw support behind Speaker House Speaker John Boner to you know for his bill to allow the house to sue obama for ex for using executive authority to delay the health care laws employer mandate which if i remember correctly was something the gop wanted to do anyway mm -hmm. so he is using his executive order to do what you wanted him to do in the first place but now you're going to sue him over it what you the fuck they tried 42 times to repeal obamacare 42 times and I remember that there's this saying that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Yeah. It is just, no. Why is Omega say? Yes, why is Omega say that? And, and, and pissed off Gomer says that I'm tired of, you know, the GOP. Yes, guess where, guess, guess where the money for them to actually live their cushy lives and their livings came from. Why tax supposed, dollars. Yes, our tax dollars went to this. Because I know, and, and I can honestly say, my tax dollars went to this because some of those times I was actually working for the trucking company. Tax dollars went into this stuff from it. So Now, yeah. like some of my tax dollars, like I, I, and I played Maryland state tax and I played Pennsylvania state tax. And, you know, you know what your tax money goes to in, in, on the state level anyway, you know, because when you see when you're stuck in traffic because they're widening such and such highway, you're like, wow, well, at least my tax dollars are at work. But... My federal tax dollars, I don't know. I'm not so sure. Yeah. Uh, so it's just, again, he's throwing his support behind John Boner, but he says, well, we can't impeach him, but we'll try and sue him for doing his for job. For what? Like, literally, like, this is not, you know, one of those commercials you say, have you tried such and such medication? You could get a large cash settlement. Like, you can't do that no. with the government. I mean, it's kind of like the person who's like, well, fine, I'll sue, even though they have no reason or no wherewithal to sue. Like, you know, you and I are very, 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 uh, you know, okay, I shouldn't say very, but we're familiar with being threatened. Well, I don't like you and I'm angry, so I'm going to sue. Mm -hmm. You have to have a reason to sue. You can't just, f it's like, again, you know, you have, you have to, something has to actually happen first. Yeah, if anything, I think the president should sue the entire GOP for bringing obstructionist assholes that is bringing this country lower and lower and lower into the abyss. But again, that's, that's not something that he can actually sue over. 
I, it should be. So and, it goes, and, it goes you know both what? ways. It and, goes both ways. Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, the difference between them wanting to sue Obama for doing his job despite them not doing anything and not allowing him to do his job to begin with and the other way around is the fact that them not doing their jobs is a detriment to the country. Yeah. So that, I think, would be enough of a ground to say, hey, guess what? Fuck you guys. We're going Counter to Countersuit. Yes. Oh, my God. If that, I don't think that would ever happen, but if it did, man, that would be the most interesting TV for a while. That would be. We would be talking about it for weeks. <laughs> all oh, of easily. Us would. All of us would. All you know, you know, all of my shows. Some it would work its way into the Port Charlie podcast somehow. That's how much we would be talking about it. <laughs> like, I mean, I remember when President Clinton was impeached. I mean, th- there was talk of nothing else. Yeah. Oh wow. So. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah. So we're, we'll 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 bring it back and then leave the, the politics behind a little bit. And go to Fremont Township, Michigan. Michigan. A 51-year-old woman accidentally shot herself in the face after she slammed the butt end of a shotgun on the floor, causing it to discharge. What? (laughs) The deputies were called about 10 a.m. on July 14th to a house on Waterman in Fremont Township for a report of a gunshot victim. Upon arrival, deputies found that a family dispute had taken place and the victim, a 51-year-old woman, told officers that she had taken a shotgun out to make a point. She told police she slammed because the button. Because that can that can only end well for everyone involved. Yeah, she told police she slammed the button on the floor, the gun discharged, and she was shot in the face. Oh Jesus Christ. Yeah. She was she was transported to the hospital and she's expected to recover. And as of this as of this show, uh, the complaint remains under investigation. Okay. Pro tip, kids. If if you're going to take out a gun to make a point, that's kind of stupid anyway. But Know how to handle your gun. It's not a toy. No. See, see, you don't, you don't beat your gun like that. You, if you, if you heard, I beat my fist on the desk. You don't use a gun that way. Especially because if you've something ever as watched a, movie, a shotgun. If you've ever watched a movie in the history of ever, you know how common a trope it is for the gun to hit something and then go off. Yeah. Guess where they got that idea? Reality. Like, I mean, I have never shot an actual gun. I've shot an air rifle many times mm-hmm. because at a summer camp I went to, they had, they had air rifles. Now, I have held a gun because I had some friends that were hunters. And the girl said to us during a girl's like, hey, look, come look at our guns. And so somewhere from years ago, there's a picture of me very uneasily holding a large weapon. Oh, wow. But the thing is that even if though it was unloaded, it, I mean, it unloaded, even though it was not loaded, I still felt nervous as shit handling it. Because it's a deadly weapon. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, and I understand the people who are like, yes, but I have a gun and I go to gun ranges and stuff like that. That's great. So you probably understand how to handle a deadly weapon. Mm-hmm. It's just, uh... Yeah, this woman unfortunately did not. I hope being shot in the face will teach her to treat her guns with a little bit more respect. Well, yeah. And a little bit more care. Uh, Blackfoot, Idaho. <laughs> Blackfoot. Uh, a Where pilot... you from, Blackfoot? There you go. Oh, I'm from Whitefoot across the way. Uh, a pilot who dropped 3,000 ping pong balls that were redeemable for prizes missed a crowd assembled for the stunt and instead hit a nearby interstate. Beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful. Organizers immediately called off the contest. Aaron Moon and helpers on Saturday told revelers at Blackfoot Pride Days not to risk retrieving the ping pong balls amid high speed traffic because organizers still plan to pass out prizes. They can had you, to tell them. Can you even fucking imagine that? You're just like, oh man, another half hour and I'll be home. Oh, I've been on the road forever. Oh, Jesus Christ. But that's not hail. That... Ping pong balls? Yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's like, oh. Oh, what was it? That, oh uh, God, I hope there's YouTube footage of that out there. I really want to see this so I hope much. so. I, I, I think beautiful. I think Captain Kangaroo came back from the dead and just yelled out ping pong balls. I think it was Captain Kangaroo who did that, right? Oh, I was I was too young. I have only have vague memories of seeing Captain Kangaroo show. Yeah, but but it was it was either him or, or somebody that, that just yelled out ping pong balls, and there it goes. <laughs> Problem is the the pilot missed, and I want to see that so much. Yes, but uh, but Moon, uh, the the uh, the uh, organ one of the organizers. He says a new pilot attempted to drop this year. Apparently they've, they've done it before. But the new pilot did not understand that ping pong balls lose, pe- lose speed quickly and drop straight down. 
Yeah, because they're just puffs. They're not very aerodynamic. I mean, they're aerodynamic, but they're not like, you know. Yeah, you ever try and throw a ping pong ball across a yard? Not gonna... I try to throw one across a beer pong table. Oh. Yeah, it just doesn't work that way. Right now, no, no, no charges are being planned as of as of this recording, but the police are planning to work with the organizers next year, so this doesn't happen again. Well, I don't think there should be any charges. I mean, if it was an accident, it was an accident, you know. Yeah. So yeah, but uh, we got about five minutes left. There's one I'm I'm gonna, just gonna cover really quick. This is this is gonna be the one that we can send out the torches and pitchforks for. A uh, 45 year old Connecticut state trooper admitted in court that he stole a gold crucifix and cash from a dying motorcyclist. What? Because what, what an the... asshole. What? Yeah. It's like no, dude. No, and Dashboard later did confirm that he'd walked over to the victim and taken the gold crucifix from a pool of blood. Why didn't he call an ambulance in as much as he is a law enforcement officer? I, I just, what the motherfuck, man? And, and here's the thing. The Superior Court judge said, Robert Devlin, by the way, this is the name here, he was sentenced, uh, Huntsman, the trooper, to 16 months in prison and five years of probation after the former trooper pled, gu pled guilty to third-degree larceny and tampering with the evidence under the Alpha Doctrine. Huntsman faced up to 10 years in prison for both felonies. These are felonies, and he's just going to be there, one, you know, a year and, uh, let's see. One and a third year in prison, and then probate. What is it? Probation up to five years? Yeah, that's that's relatively light. It should be at least three or four years, I think. Yeah, at least because not only are you 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 know you're an officer, you you are the one who are who is supposed to enforce the law, not break it. Well, look at it this way. I mean, I've heard that when when uh, dirty police officers are sent to jail, it's not a fun time for them. It's like an especially not a fun time for them. Well, then maybe they should have thought about it before they fucked up and got sent to jail. Well, no, I'm thinking, like, maybe, you know, they'll, he'll get beat up a lot. Probably. Well, maybe, and he'll think twice now, wouldn't he? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just just because you, you admitted it doesn't mean we should go lighter on you. Because you're the ones who are supposed to be enforcing it in the first place. Mm-hmm. So, no. You, you know, I, I would think at this particular point in my life, in my history, that... Officers who break the law should have a harsher sentence by default because they're the ones who are supposed to be enforcing them in the first place. Yeah, but I think that might run into legal trouble because then you're, you're – that's like messing with stuff constitutionally, I think. Possibly. But I, I, I do agree with you in theory. Yeah. So, yeah. So get out your pitchforks. Go find this fucker up in Connecticut. Oh, hey, I, I think I – think Kitty Marie lives in Connecticut. She can go and find him and, like, kick him in the face. <laughs> Kitty Justice. Yes, Kitty Justice. Whee! This, this fall on NBC. Yes. Oh, so with that, that is the news for this week, and that, well, that ladies and gentlemen, means that is the end of our show. <laughs> oh, so next week, uh, provided there are no hiccups, that we are, we are actually going to have a, a, a special guest, which I've been planning for the past month. We finally got a date settled down. We're going to have a guest next week. With, with on the show and it's gonna be awesome. She's gonna be great, and you'll we'll, we'll, we'll see what she she see who she is. I'll I'll announce it on Tumblr as well. So uh, so if you want to check it out, go there. It's on. It'll be on my Tumblr probably along with this Tumblr. this video. Um, but uh, before I give all that stuff out, uh, where can we find you on the internet, Omega? Oh, just fucking everywhere. I'm. You can follow me on Twitter at the Omega Geek. I do have a website, theomegageek.com. I'll update it eventually. I swear. I have a Facebook fan page. If you'd like to like me on Facebook, you can find my stuff at um, blip.tv backslash the Omega. I'm on Nerdvice. I'm on RT Gomer Prods. I'm just in your face everywhere. Yes. And don't forget, you know, Lesbian Talk is also on That Guy with the Glasses, which... Oh, yeah, that's true. Which, as of this recording, they, they were Rob was supposed to send out the, uh, the emails this week to tell people if they made it or not. So far, as of this recording, I have not gotten one yet. I haven't heard anything one way or the other, so unfortunately I have no information to give. Yeah, we, we, we do not know. So maybe by the time this goes up tomorrow, people will know and the internet will be a buzz and everything. And if you if you tried out, good luck to you. Yes. I hope that you get in, everyone. Yes, so so yay. But um, 
But if you want to find me on the internet in the meantime, uh, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at Gomer21XX. You can find my site, RT Gomer Productions, at RTGomer.com, which also has its own Facebook page. Hooray! You can find my stuff also over on Nerdvice.com. And if you want to listen to this show and take it with you, this show, Constructive Deconstruction, and the Fort Charlie Podcast are also all on iTunes. Go and check them iTunes. out. iTunes! And I mentioned the Patreon stuff earlier in the show. If you want to get, help the show out a little bit, you know, help give me, you know, more food on my table, that would be nice. But in addition to upgrading equipment and all of that good stuff, then head on over to patreon.com slash gomer to one double X. And if Damn. you want to get some amazing artwork done by an amazing artist and an award-winning animator check out my girlfriend becky hopkins who is also on patreon at patreon.com slash becky hop she also has links to her deviant art and her own web page as well um you know go throw some money at her if you throw enough money at her she'll do a 30 second animation for you which she'll do a dance sweet and she might do a dance too well see if you support someone on patreon it can feel like you're some kind of like you know wealthy italian merchant family during the renaissance yes there's always that Yes, the patron of the arts. It helps us out, helps you out. You get some entertainment, which in and of itself, even if, and even if you can't give to either me or Becky or or anybody else, you know, pass the links along. You know, spread you know, the word. Yeah, spread the word around, and 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 maybe other people will be like, hey, you know, I I would like to throw money behind this. There you go. And as I say, one dollar does really go a long way. It it does help. Especially, and I, I will admit, I do like 20 to 25 productions counting these podcasts per month. So yes. it, it could be a little daunting, but if, if but if, if you think you can do it, if you can handle it and, and all of that, then that's great. You can even set your own limits so you don't go over budget if, if you're worried about that. I know I do. So at any rate, thank you guys for listening and listening to me ramble a little bit and listening to us go off and, and blast all of the politicians again. We hate everyone. Ready, go. Yes. <laughs> some day, some weeks it feels like that. <laughs> oh, but uh, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the Omega signing mm-hmm. off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.